Sunday on Knight Rider. That was no lady. A master of disguise plots high treason. I plan to kill someone by the name of Michael Knight. Can Kid and Michael clip his wings? Production 58631, Night of the Chameleon. This episode was written by Robert Sherman and directed by Winrick Colby. It originally aired on NBC Sunday night, 8 p.m. on December 30th, 1984. It was filmed from October 24th through November 2nd of 1984. This episode had the working title of simply The Chameleon. It was the 52nd episode to air, but the 55th episode to be produced. The synopsis reads as follows. Michael and Kit face a former enemy nicknamed the Chameleon, who can disguise himself as anyone or anything. So with that said, let's dig in. And the first thing we notice in the background here is the location, right? They are filming at the College of Canyons, College of the Canyons, in Valencia, California. This is the same location we've seen a bunch of times in the show, starting with Deadly Maneuvers. Uh, we'll see it again in The Wrong Crowd. We saw it in Knights of the Fast Lane. Um, just a, uh, a very cool, well-known Knight Rider filming location. All right, so we're gonna start with the actual teaser. This is the scene where the chameleon escapes uh, gets away from Michael and Kit uh, right after stealing the jetpack. And we see the scene where Michael's looking up and he says, just when you think he's run out of surprises. That scene was actually cut from the episode, but it does make it into the teaser here. Michael, just when you think he's run out of surprises. So we've got uh, Dick Gautier appearing here as uh, uh, Jay Gordon Baxter alias the chameleon and dick was uh, a pretty well-known uh actor for for me personally i remember him as jaime the robot in the 1960s get smart series but we talked to him he's uh since passed on but we talked to him um back in 2002 maybe 2003 a long time ago and um he had some interesting he didn't remember a ton about the episode but he did have a couple interesting uh stories and anecdotes about the the episode but we're going to save those for the actual scenes that he's talking about so more to come so the college of canyons um is supposed to be at least in story it's supposed to be the like district magistrate the county courthouse complex things like that but obviously in reality it's a college so we see the scene right after um, the chameleon makes his escape and Michael and Kit leave her in hot pursuit. If you look in the background for just a couple frames, you can actually see college students, right? They're carrying their books, they're, they're young, and these are actual students at College of the Canyons when they were filming and they just happened to make it on screen for just this couple brief seconds. So now this chase ensues between the chameleon and this uh, getaway van and uh, Michael and Kit. This is not the uh, van, the Rodent Raiders van from Soul Survivor. I thought it was at first, but that was a Chevrolet. This is the GMC version, too bad. But um, we can see it going through this uh, new housing development. And then we see this close-up of Kit. Again, one of the rare times later in the series where Kit does not have his scanner on. Uh, and it's just for this one brief scene here. But then we move forward and um, Michael hits the turbo boost. I know this is blurry, but Michael hits the turbo boost to jump over um, a truck. But what's interesting is they actually had a camera mounted inside the car. So you see the actual takeoff, just like that. So you see the takeoff of the car, which was pretty neat. They didn't really put the cameras inside the cars for turbo boosts very often. They mounted them on the outside for point of view shots, but not on the inside like this. See, and then he's coming back down. So... So it starts like this, it's blur, he goes up, coming back down, and actually if you look at this while he's coming back down, look at all the people in the background watching the jump, right? You got all these people up on the hill, um, probably crew members, I'd imagine. You got a guy over here, looks like maybe he's standing on top of a vehicle, just trying to 
um, watch that. I suppose you don't see a Trans Am flying through the air every day. And then we get this point of view shot here with the camera mounted on this uh, post. And look at this guy right here. He's taking, taking a photograph of the actual jump. So Kit flies over and lands on the other side. And when he lands, you can just barely see one of the hubcaps flies off here. And if you watch this, it'll just drift off to the side. All right, so now the chase ends in this uh, shopping center and uh, the chameleon gets away. This shopping center has actually been seen on Knight Rider before, sort of. You can see this in the background of the pilot whenever the two thieves steal Kit and um, they start doing the 360s in the middle of the intersection. The shop, This shopping center is in the background there. And we actually went to the shopping center uh, in 2012, we did this Knight Rider locations tour with um, unit production manager Ron Martinez, and we went to the College of the Canyons, and we ended up eating lunch at, maybe it was this this one right here, I can't remember, but this all still looks pretty much the same. Different businesses, but the buildings look the same. So um, the chameleon meets up with uh, his old friend Armand Pressler and Riles, the bodyguard here, and um, this set... We've talked about this before. This is the set on stage one that they built um, in season three, and it was used a number of times. It was used uh, during the scene at uh, the Foundation headquarters when they were decorating flag for Halloween. Um, it's uh, It was used in Night in Disgrace. It will be used again in um, Voodoo Night, in Night Flight to Freedom. Um, there's a whole bunch. I know I'm missing a bunch, but um, this set... Uh, was built alongside the set for Devin's office and the set for the semi to use just for kind of generic interior scenes. So Michael now arrives at uh, Tony Baxter's house and uh, this is at uh, 1927 Vista Del Mar in Hollywood. And if we want to look at it today, um, you know, you drive by and you wouldn't even realize it's the same location because of these tall shrubs, they have it gated off. You got this giant tree in the front, but that is in fact, the exact same location. In fact, if you look here at the pillars, see the design here? You can see it matches right here. So same location, just uh, covered up a bit. So we've got Nicholas Worth here um, making his Knight Rider debut as Riles the bodyguard and he of course will reappear again in a very similar role, now that I think about it, in um, Knight of the Juggernaut as pretty much the bodyguard over there as well. All right, so Michael arrives at Armand's restaurant. This is on um, Stanley Street, uh, perpendicular to Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, this was the Dar Maghreb restaurant. I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly. But unfortunately, it has since closed. But if we look at it today, um, you can still see it has those same really ornate doors that it had back uh, in the 80s. Those are all still the same, but unfortunately it is now closed. But the building's still there. All right, so I point out this scene in the semi for one specific reason. There's a great clip, which I'm going to play for you here in a minute, from the blooper reel of this scene, where um, Michael turns around and says, you know where that call came from. So let's play the clip from the actual show, and then let's show you the blooper reel one, because it's kind of neat. Do you know where that phone call came from? Kit! Do you know where that phone call came from? Yes, Michael. We just received the new data from Interpol. So Kit traces a phone call from the uh, Armand's restaurant to the Chameleon. And Kit pinpoints it here um, at Innsdale Drive and Canyon Lake in Los Angeles. But in reality, um, in story-wise, that's what Michael says. Oh, that's Tony's, you know, Tony's place. And then he goes to see Tony. So I was just curious, in reality, how far off was this location from the actual filming location? And it's about two and a half miles off. So right here, this is where Kit says Tony's house is. But in reality, Tony's house is right here. So it's off by two and a half miles, but still just a neat little... Um, mistake that you probably never even notice. And then you have this fantastic scene. Um, this is the right-hand blind drive car, obviously. And again, this harkens back to what we talked about at the beginning of our Season 3 episode commentaries about how them wanting to utilize the right-hand blind drive car to transition from Michael driving to Kit driving or vice versa without cutting 
uh, the scene at all. So this is just a, a great scene where Hasselhoff gets out the door, jumps out, and Kit continues all without cutting the scene. And for those of you curious, there were eight Trans Ams used in this episode. We have the hardtop stunt car. We've got the roll cage acrylic window jump car, the season three and four hero car, the right hand blind drive car, which you see here. We've got um, the general purpose T-top stunt car. We've got the left hand blind drive car and we've got the season three insert car. Now I know that's only seven cars. Um, there was an eighth car that was listed on the call sheets, but we don't think it was actually used in the episodes, but it was on set. And that eighth car is actually the stock nosed high traction drop down kit. You don't actually see it in this episode, but according to our notes, it was on set. And for those of you who want to learn more about the stock nose kit, we did a dedicated video, actually two dedicated videos specifically on that car. So check it out. No license plate frame, license plate frame. So now we have the chameleon inside JBX Industries and um, looking to uh, steal the jetpack. If you look in the background, you see this giant number five on the door. This tells me that this was filmed at the College of the Canyons in their auto body shop because they did and still do have a row of garage doors and they all have these giant number fives on. You can see them a number of times in Knight Rider in the other episodes where College of the Canyons is featured. Uh, Knights of the Fast Lane, The Wrong Crowd, Night Strike. Um, but uh, that tells me that this is, that's where this was filmed, probably inside the, one of those bay doors. And this is um, sci-fi prop heaven um, if you just look back here, these were all rented from uh, Modern Props, which is now closed. But this this unit back here, I do recognize from um, the Santa Roses, actually, at the very beginning. This was in the Santa Roses, and I'm sure these other ones were in Knight Rider, some other places too, but I can't necessarily um, pick them out right at this moment. All right, so let's take a moment and let's talk about this jetpack. So you'd be forgiven if you thought that this was just a prop but in reality this was actually a working jetpack and this was brought to the show by a man named bill Souter. so um bill's story goes like this he had been working uh he had been flying uh, planes at bell aero systems in the 60s whenever he was really young he was 18 19 years old and this jetpack, officially known as the Rocket Belt, was developed by Bell Aerosystems for the U.S. Army. And um, part of the contract with the Army, between the Army and Bell, was that they wanted to train a young man with no previous flying experience. They wanted to see if someone who had no previous flying experience could handle um, a jetpack. So... Um, this this jetpack was invented, actually invented by a man named Wendell Moore, who was a family friend and neighbor of Bill Souter. And uh, Wendell was uh, looking for that person, that young man with no flying experience, to do the to use the jetpack. Um, so Bill uh, was Wendell's neighbor, and so Wendell came over one day and said, "Hey, kid, want a job?" And uh, Bill jumped at the chance, and he became uh, the guy, the rocketeer, I guess, the original rocketeer, the guy that uh, handled the jetpack. And um, for those of you uh, familiar with the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles, Bill actually, in the opening ceremonies, flew this exact same jetpack. And he flew it in a number of other TV shows and movies as well. So Dick Gautier, we asked him specifically about the, the jetpack, and he said, obviously, that wasn't him on the jetpack. He said it was a real jetpack, but it wasn't him. No one was allowed to use it but the the one guy, the Bill Souter, who was on set. It was quite dangerous. You're aloft for something like nine seconds tops, and then you plummet like a rock. Dick did get to put the jetpack on, and he just said it was very heavy and very unwieldy, but um, he never got to fly in it. That was only Bill Souter. So this is the scene I was talking about earlier, um, whenever Michael says, just when you think he's run out of surprises. And it's one of the rare times we see Kit just absolutely filthy. 
here. This is the uh, general purpose T-top stunt car that uh, came in in season three. And there's also a number of um, promotional photos that were taken of Kit during this the time they were up on this mountain filming. So let's take a look at those because there's something interesting I want to show you about them. So there's the first one. Obviously that's the, the same car from the uh, other side. You can see it's just as filthy. But um, hardtop stunt car right here. But what I want to show you is this photo. Some of you might have seen this photo before. Look at Kit's roof. Look at all the gaff, gaffer's tape on the roof right there. I don't know why they would need to, it almost looks like it's holding the roof down, which I just don't understand. So what car is this? I think, I think this is the season three insert car. And if I had to wager a guess as to why there's all this tape up here, if you remember the season three insert car at the beginning, when they started filming season three, um, had the working auto roof. My guess is they're at this point in the series, you know, it's a prop, it's used and abused. My guess is it didn't work anymore. And the, the T tops on that insert card never latch down. They just open and close and kind of bounce there. My guess is they taped them down um, because it was either malfunctioning or it was flapping while they were trying to film the interior scenes. But um, that's just just uh, pure speculation. But that's the only reason I could think of why they would have the tape up there. So, yeah, you can see it more from this front view here. Yeah. Stretch all the way across the front and down this way. So here we have uh, Dominic Brascia from, um, this is his first appearance in the show. He appears again in season four's Night Behind Bars as the love struck guy who bumps into love um outside of the the gym i believe but um this is obviously the season three hero card and you can see here that this whole scene was actually filmed completely in a different location this is at universal studios in hollywood you can see the um i'm, I'm not sure what you call it. i the the tiered building with all the trees on it which i think is still there today but this is the same building they used as the hospital in race for life and of course the the uh Universe Studios Tower, the Black Tower, one of the two Black Towers in the background. And if you look real closely, there's our uh, yellow Volkswagen Rabbit. So did you ever take a look at this flyer to win the prizes, the, the prize of the kit ultimately wins at the end of the episode? It's pretty easy and straightforward, right? I mean, there's only a couple things that need to be um, identified, and then you win, I guess. Maybe the first one to turn it in. How did Kit turn this in, by the way? He's just a car. Anyways, um, out of curiosity, put in the comments below, what are these things? That almost looks like a starter, doesn't it? But what's this? What kind of connector is this? And what what uh, is this diagram depicting? Just out of curiosity. Let's see if any of you can win these valuable prizes from 1984. All right, so Michael heads back to Tony's house. And once again, there's our yellow Volkswagen Rabbit making another appearance so this is interesting um this is the scene where um kit is coming to rescue tony and michael from riles and uh this is the left hand blind drive car coming around behind the tony's house and um notice the fog lights the fog lights are uh flashing in an unusual pattern and this is probably reminiscent to you of the um, scene in race for life whenever kit comes and pretends to be a, a, a police car with flashing headlights right the headlights are blue and red and they flash back and forth but here it's the fog lights so this is the same car that was used for that race for life sequence however in Race for Life, we only see the headlights flashing back and forth. We don't see the fog lights flashing. Here, we don't see the headlights, but we see the fog lights flashing. So um, it's the same car, but uh, different functionality with the flashing lights. But this is the only car in the entire series that had any type of flasher unit on the headlights or the fog lights. I always thought this was a nice touch. So this is the chameleon pretending to be Michael Knight. But obviously, this is David Hasselhoff playing the chameleon playing evil Michael Knight. 
Um, but I thought this was a nice touch. They actually did put a wig on Hasselhoff for this scene. So you see him adjusting it and pulling it down. It's actually a wig. It's not his actual hair. So there is some realty to that. And um, we can see the chameleon's ring right here that he's wearing, which he wears throughout this episode. And obviously uh, the chameleon is trying to dress like Michael somewhat. And he finds a leather jacket, which isn't quite the same as the leather jacket that um, Michael normally wears. So this jacket does still exist. In fact, it was auctioned off, I think at Profiles in History back in 2015. Here's a, there's a picture of it. Yeah, right there. So um, this jacket was only used in this one episode, I believe. I'm trying to think of any other episodes. I know in Hearts of Stone, Michael wears a different black leather jacket with white piping, but it's not this one. Anyways, this jacket sold in 2015 for 1300 bucks. So for 1300 bucks, you have an original Hasselhoff worn Knight Rider jacket, just not the one that everyone hopes to have. Moving on. All right, so now we're at um, this uh, the climax of the episode here. We see Tony getting out of kit. But what do we see here? Well, we see seatbelts, right? Look at this. See this right here? A tan lap belt. All of the Knight Rider cars had seatbelts in them. Because if you think about it, they're either towing the cars or actually driving them, and they wanted to keep the actor safe. So if uh, it didn't look like they were wearing seatbelt, they were always wearing lap belts. Some cars had tan lap belts, some had black lap, lap belts. But that's what you're looking at there. And then if we go ahead one scene, or one frame, we can see here um, something in the background, probably a script, and this looks like a walkie-talkie, which we see a lot um, sitting inside of Kit to talk to the uh, camera truck. So Kit's coming to the rescue. Michael's about to throw a grenade in his trunk. This location is Fort MacArthur in San Pedro, California. And I always remember this location. I mean, beyond this episode. I remember it for... Um, they filmed some of the fifth season of the A-Team here whenever they were... Um, the A-Team had been caught and they were under trial and, and they were in prison. This is the location. And and uh, I think even in the opening credits of the fifth season of A-Team, we see almost this exact same angle here. But to look at it now, it's um, all run down. The Battery, Barlow, Saxton, Angels, Gate, Bunkers. But uh, you can see it's covered in graffiti now, unfortunately. But Kit came driving down through here and uh, Michael came out of one of the doors under here. So we move forward, Michael um, throws the grenade in, Kit closes it up and uh, starts to explode. This is the hardtop stunt car and this is a great look at the roof of the hardtop stunt car. You can see the fake T-top strip right here. You can see there's no T-top here. It's all one solid piece. Um, and also, just one thing to note, which we might have addressed before, but these cars had like 15, 20 coats of paint on them by the time the series was over. And if you look here, you can see how thick and orange peely the paint is. And they didn't bother masking everything off. If you look here, this rubber trim, look how shiny it is. That's because they just kept painting over it and over it. They didn't bother masking this off. They'd mask the glass off, but not stuff like this, not the door handles. Um, if this had a T-top here, the T-top the end piece. Um, and a lot, actually, I think all of the original Night Rider cars, well, most of the original, I think I know there's one at least, but um, these are all still painted high gloss black. And that's why they just didn't bother. They didn't have time to mask that stuff off. All right, and this is one of the, I think this is the debut of the AirVac system, isn't it? I think it is. We only see it a couple times in the series. The other one that's coming to mind is in Nightlines after yet another bomb is exploded inside of Kit. And obviously this whole footage where the smoke is receding was all filmed in reverse. This again is still that hardtop stunt car you can tell by this um, weird overhead console. All right, so then after that's all taken care of, we see Michael and Tony take off to go catch uh, the chameleon. So this is still um, that Fort MacArthur. And actually, if we go over here, where we just were, how Kit came through here. Kit goes through this tunnel right here and emerges out this other side. And actually in the episode, you see him emerge out of this other side and he takes a hard right and goes up this hill. And that's where we're at right here. He's taking a hard right out of here and going up to catch the chameleon. Okay, this might be my absolute favorite Easter egg 
maybe in the entire series. And this footage was filmed way back, I believe in season one or early season two. But um, it's just some general stock footage that they filmed. Um, but look at this. Look at this sign right here. It's so hard to read, but it says, Welcome to the Night Rider. So this uh, Rivendale obviously heard that Knight Rider was going to be filming and they decided to, to welcome the Knight Rider on the sign. And that's exactly what that says there. So my absolute favorite Easter egg of the entire series right there. Welcome to the Knight Rider. All right, so then we have this fantastic sequence towards the end. Um, we see uh, Michael ejecting out of kit and uh, going up to reach uh, the chameleon up in the jetpack. For this specific scene... Um, this jetpack is not actually holding this man up. There's actually a crane with a uh, quick release wire that's hooked on right here. Okay. And actually, if we, you know, the, uh, the commercial we showed you at the very beginning of this video, it actually shows this scene. And in that scene, you can clearly see the crane arm coming out. It's, it's in the frame. It's not cropped like this. Um, so a crane is holding the, the uh, jetpack operator up. Because if you remember um, what we talked about when we talked about the jetpack a little bit, um, Dick Gaudier said it could only be in the air for like 10 seconds before it came plummeting, plummeting to the ground. So they needed a way to keep the jetpack up in the air. And if we go ahead um, a few scenes, you can see that wire right there a little bit better. And then even better right here. Right, you can see the the wire the whole way there and how it's connected, and then there it is still connected and they do the quick release and watch, Pew. see how it there there it is and then it quick releases and then they both drop into the uh, lake and obviously this is just a fake jack pack at this point they're not going to use they're not going to put the real one down in the water. Okay, so Michael has caught the chameleon. We're back at Tony's house and uh, Michael is wearing. Uh, one of his more uglier shirts. We saw this back at the end of Goliath Returns, and now we see it again here. And in fact, there's also a Good Morning America interview floating out there um, from, I think, January of 1985, so a few months after um, this was filmed. And Hasselhoff is wearing that same shirt in that um, interview. So I don't know if this was his personal shirt or if he just kept it from wardrobe, but... Um, it wouldn't be bad without this this collar. All right, and they go back outside. Kit has won all these prizes. Let's see what he's won, shall we? There's a gas tank, uh, some air filters, more air filters, another gallon of, is that kerosene? Uh, velour car seats, uh, seat covers, more seat covers. Uh, what is this, a floor mat or cup holders, a steering wheel. Uh, what else? A tow rope, a, a charger, um, and another battery charger right here. So it's, uh, look at this, a horn, a di diesel horn right there. So um, a nice little uh, mix of, of 1984 era automotive accessories. Yeah, and there's some uh, polishing compound and rubbing compound and some tape. Alrighty, we have wrapped up Night of the Chameleon. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hope you saw something you've never seen before whenever you've watched this episode. If you like this content, do me a favor. Please subscribe to our channel. Please share this video. Um, all of those things help to increase our uh, subscriber base and help us to grow. So we really appreciate it. Next time, we're going to cover Custom Made Killer. As always, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. And now, while we listen to Joe's selection of Knight Rider music that we received directly from Don Peak himself, we'd like to thank these Patreon supporters. Look at you guys scrolling up the screen to my right. Wait a minute, how can you tell which side is my right since you can't see me because I'm not on camera? Oh well, you know what I mean. We're featuring these fine supporters at our Knight Rider prop restorer level. Thank you very much for your support. And for those of you at the Knight Rider History Hunter level, we're recognizing you right now in the description. Now, if you enjoyed seeing this golden nugget of Knight Rider history being rescued from obscurity, then please 
consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support would empower us to bring you even more of these historical nuggets. We are the Knight Rider Historians. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.